Okay, so here we are on our Windows 7 computer. Now remember, what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder and then share that folder to users out on the DR LAN domain. You know, those users are going to be logged into different computers and they're going to connect to our shared folder and get into the files within that shared folder. Now, if you're setting this up in the Winter Park Tech Classroom and doing a lab on NTFS and share permissions, you're going to want to check a couple of things on that Winter Park Tech computer before you set it up. First of all, the computer must be joined or part of the Winter Park Tech domain. So you need to verify that. And also, your Winter Park do domain user account must be part of the local administrative group on this computer. And that way you can create shares and share to the network. So let's check and make sure that this computer is part of the DR LAN domain. So the way you do that is you'd click on Start, you'd right click on Computer, and left click on Properties. Now in this Properties window that come up, you can see you have your computer name here. And your lab computer will have a computer name. And then down here we see we have the computer name and we see it's part of the DR LAN domain. Now when you're setting the computer up in the Winter Park Tech Lab, of course, you're going to have a different computer name, and then it's going to be VWP Tech, which means that computer is part of the Winter Park Tech domain. Now, the other thing we need to verify is that your Winter Park Tech domain user account is part of the local administrative group on this computer. How do we do that? Go ahead and close this. Well, we're going to click Start, and we could right-click on Computer and left-click on Manage. Or we could simply go to the Start Search dialog box and type in computer and click on computer management and we'll click on the arrow in front of local users and groups and click on groups below that here again is our local administrative account or I'm sorry our local group I'll double click on that and here you can see all of the users your Winter Park Tech domain username must be added to this now in this video series, I'm using the SAM account on the DR LAN domain. If you were setting this up in the lab, in the classroom lab at Winter Park Tech, you're going to have to have VWP Tech backslash your username. Now, if either your username. Now, if your computer has not been joined to the domain, or your Winter Park Tech user account has not been added to the local administrators group, you're going to have to ask your instructor to help you join your computer and add your user account to the local administrative group. Now let's create a folder on this Win7 computer that we're going to share to the DR LAN domain. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Windows Explorer and I'll click on the C drive and I want to create a new folder. I could right click New folder. I could just go up here and click on new folder. And we're going to call our folder data. Now let's add a couple of documents to our data folder. I'm going to go ahead and open up data. I'll go new. Uh, let's click on rich text document. We'll call this public. And then I'll right click again. We'll create one more file here and we'll call this private. So now we have two files inside of the data folder and we want to share this data folder to our domain network. We want users out on the domain to be able to get into this data folder and then get into the private doc and the public doc. Now let's go ahead and share the folder. Now the way you share a folder is you simply right click on the folder, left click on properties, and then go to the Sharing tab. Now, if you're a new user or home user, you're going to click on the Share button, and you can add users and groups, and then click on the Share, and your folder would be shared. But an IT administrator will not use this wizard, but will use the Advanced Settings. Now, with Advanced Settings, the, use, the IT administrator has more control over the share and the permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Advanced Sharing, and this window comes up and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give this folder a share name. So I'll click on check to share this folder and now we need to give it a share name. Now there's three ways you can sh um, assign a share name to a folder. 
First of all, you can name the folder the same as the folder. I can leave the share name the same name as the folder that we're sharing. The other way is I could actually change it. I could change it to a different name. And when I shared the folder, when users access this folder, it would be called tech data and not data. So you can actually give it a different name so it has more meaning to the users connecting to it. Now the third way that we could share, set up a share name is by adding the dollar sign or what we call creating a hidden share. So what I could do is call it data dollar sign. By adding that dollar sign to the share name, the share name would be hidden. So when users on the network access the folder, it would be a hidden share. And we're going to see how this works later on. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and share this folder as the same name as the folder name. So we're going to call it data. We're going to click on apply and OK and then close. And now we've shared that folder. Now let's see how users out on the DR LAN would connect to this data share that we've just created. Now here I've logged into a different computer out on the DR LAN domain. And we want to connect to that data share. So the way you do this is you click on start. And then the user would type in backslash backslash win7-1, which is the computer name of the computer that has the folder that we've shared. And then we go ahead and press enter. And you can see that we have now connected to the shares that are available on the Win 7-1 computer. We have our data folder that we've shared and we can see that there's also a printer that's shared on that Win 7 computer. So that's, this is one way how users out on the DRLAN domain would get to that shared folder. I could double click on that shared folder and now here are our documents and we can open up a document. Now when you first share a folder, the everyone group is given permissions to that folder. Now let's go back to that Win7 computer and lock that folder down so not everyone would be able to get into the data folder and manipulate the files. Now here we are in the Win7 computer again. Now before we set up permissions on our data folder, let's go ahead and create another folder and share that as a hidden share. So I'm going to click on the C drive here. Again, I'll click on New, Create a Folder. And this time we're going to call that folder Data. Let's call it Data 2. And we're going to go ahead and share that folder. So I'll right click on it, go to Properties. Again, I click on the Sharing tab. And we're not going to use the home user share. We're going to use what IT administrators would use to get more detail and more control over what they're sharing. We'll click on Advance. We'll click on Share. And again, we have to give it a share name. We could give the share name the same as the folder that the name of the folder that we're sharing. Or we could change the name to make it more useful to the users that are connecting. Or we can put the dollar sign behind it, which makes it a hidden share. So I'll click on Apply and OK and Close. And now we've shared the data to folder, but it is now a hidden shared folder. Let's see how that would look when we go to that other computer and try to access the data to folder. Okay, again, we're on that computer, the other computer on the DRLAN domain. So again, we would go to our start menu, type in backslash backslash win7-1. And if I press enter here, again, we don't see the data to administrative share or the hidden share. We see our data folder and we see a printer share but we do not see that hidden share that we created the data to folder. So how would a user get to that? Well the way we do it, I'll go ahead and close this, is we would have to type the entire share name. So I'll type in backslash backslash win7-1 backslash and then I would type in the name of that share. So here's the share name again and here's the computer name. And now when we press enter you can see that we have opened up the data to dollar sign share on the Windows 7 computer and we were able to access that. So that's a way to hide the folder 
So normal users can't just go out on the network and browse the Windows 7 computer and access those shares. So administrators many times will put that dollar sign behind the share name so it's hidden on the network. And that way for a user to access it, or administrator to access that share, they would have to remember to type in that dollar sign to access that folder. Now let's go back to the Win7 computer and see how we set, set up permissions on that folder, that data folder. So not everyone on the domain can get in and access those files. Now here we are again back on our Win7 computer. So let's go ahead and set up permissions on our data folder. Now the way we do this is we right click on our data folder again and go back to properties. Now there are two types of permissions that we can assign to a folder. They're called share permissions and NTFS permissions. Our share permissions are going to be under the sharing tab. And again, I'll go back to advanced settings and I'll click on permissions. And you can see here that by default when we create a shared folder and share it to the network, the everyone group has read permissions on the folder. This is done by default. And these are where we set up our share permissions. Now let's go look at the NTFS permissions. Click cancel, cancel. And we'll go NTFS permissions are on the security tab. So I click on the security tab and you can see that we have a number of groups here that have been assigned to NTFS permissions on our data folder. We've got the authenticated users group, the system group, the administrator's local group, remember this is a local group, Win7-1 administrators means this is a local group on the Win7 computer. And then we have the local users group. So these are the two tabs that set up the two different types of permission. We use the sharing tab to set up share permissions and we use the security tab to set up NTFS permissions. Now why do we have two types of permissions to set up on a folder? Well, the share permissions, you must understand, only apply to users that connect from the network. Users that sit down on the Win7 computer and log on locally by typing their username and password and logging into the computer, share permissions do not apply to those people. Share permissions only apply to users that are logged on to other computers on the network and access the folder across the network. NTFS permissions, on the other hand, apply to users logged on both to the Windows 7 computer and they apply to users that log on across the network to the data folder. So that's why they've separated the two permissions. Share permissions is only permissions that for people that connect across the network and share or security or NTFS permissions apply to those people that log on to the computer and access the folder across the network. Now another reason we have two sets of permissions is that share permissions are set up on a folder. NTFS permissions are set up on the folder and they can also be set up on individual files. So NTFS permissions are much more restrictive and much you can provide much more control to the users that access these different folders and files.